she's live it would be a pretty boring live it was just a black screen so just like myself and i just chatting to myself <laughs> hello how are you hello. good great so good to see you excited for our chat today you too yeah i am so excited too and um so to anyone that's watching hello and i'm just going to quickly just check that we're streaming in the group yep Beautiful. And I believe that you can leave comments. So please say hello and where you're watching from and if you're an RCT student. And oh, sorry, it's got this automatic thing. I'll just delete that. We can't see your name, unfortunately, because we're using some new um, stream software. So you're going to have to say your name. It just says face with you. So I'm so sorry. But if you do have questions, do ask. And I'm sure we can have some questions time at the end. Um, unless Chanel can see the questions, I'm not sure. And so should, for any of you that don't know, um, Chanel is a really, really good friend of mine. We've known each other for, I would say, nine years. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think even 10 oh my god um yeah so we met during our nlp training back mm. in 2014 or whenever it was yeah, Th yeah th maybe 30 i can't remember um and that's how we first connected and then after that we both swapped sessions with each other i think or i, I think i asked you for sessions and mm. I and we were kind of supporting each other early on in our becoming practitioners journey. And yeah. then, um, yeah, then when I met Ryan, I we started where we started getting too many clients that we could handle. So I was like, who could we hire? And the first person, of course, that came to mind was Chanel because she was still doing like running her business on the side of working and I was like, come over here. And I think initially you were like, no, or or you were like thinking about it. I can't remember. No, I jumped at the opportunity. Oh, I was, oh, yeah, okay. I was super excited to have the opportunity to be able to do this work full time yeah. because I, as you said, I was um, always, I mean, I was a baby back then. I think I was like 23. Um, we were both kind of babies back then. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was doing, I was always doing my business on the side of a job. I had so many limiting beliefs and fears about running a full-time business back then. So as soon as you offered me the opportunity to work at the Centre for Healing full-time, I was all over it. Yeah. Well, I mm. think I think what I remember that was funny was that when I was asking you, I started crying. We were like at a cafe. <laughs> it was like really yeah. hard for me to be vulnerable or something. And I just, I was like, eh. yeah, so mm -hmm. I can't. But, yeah, so it was, like, amazing. Chanel is amazing. She's an amazing practitioner. And then when we, you know, changed from having the centre to not, now you can take over kind of where with the start of that journey. And I, I think in relation to, you know, we're using root cause therapy, of course, at the centre. We didn't have a name for it yet. It was just, well, there was a few names thrown around, but it wasn't official. Um, yeah, so share with us thank <laughs> you um so i guess i'll first start by saying um i did do an interview in one of your groups i think it was the six oh, yes. program course about six months ago so obviously some whoever's in that group is probably um already quite aware of some of my journey so some of these things might be repeated um and some things might be new um, but really excited to have the opportunity to share more about my journey with the students who aren't in that um, course. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting because it's almost like I was just, I realised the other day, it's almost like I've done a 360 because when Mel did reach out to me um, to join the Centre for Healing and we mentioned I was running a business on the side of my job, my job was actually at a call centre and the, the call centre had um, a lot of staff turnover. And so at that time, um, my title was a life coach and they had found out that that's what I was doing. And I started actually running group life coach sessions for the teams at the sales um, 
center helping them to achieve their sales targets in the business and oh, wow. I was creating my own role there as like the corporate life coach so I was happy when you reached out which is why you might have thought oh maybe she's going to be a bit resistant yeah um, but even though I loved what I was doing I was all over the opportunity to be able to work under you and Ryan full time so yeah I obviously um, joined the team and was working as one of the therapists there for, I think it was about three years um, yep. and was able to obviously gain so much experience in the root cause therapy method, um, but also watch how yourself and Ryan ran a business, which was really cool. Um, so yeah, then when the center closed down and it was time to go out on my own, it was definitely the push that I needed um, because I've always had this knowing within me that I was supposed to run my own business. Obviously I was doing it before working for you guys, but I had that fear of doing it full time. So it really gave me the push that I needed. Um, and I was so lucky that I had already worked on quite a lot of blocks with the root cause therapy method uh, whilst working at the center. So um, yeah, it was about two and a half years ago that I started my business. Um, and it's transitioned and I've pivoted quite a lot throughout the journey, which has been really, really cool. And it's been such a journey of, um, inner self-development as well, as you would know, yeah. I'm sure yeah. everyone listening, uh, feels the same if they've already started their business. For and, sure. um, so when I first started the business, my programs were a personal development program, a mental health program, and an addiction recovery program. Uh, and how did you how did you decide to come up with that offering initially? Mm. So that was just very much based on what I knew that the work that we were doing at the center, because we obviously already had a mental health program and an, addic and an addiction recovery program at the center. Um, so for me, first stepping into business, I was like, I'm just going to do what's safe. I'm just going to do what yeah. I know. Um, but as I said, it's transitioned a lot since then. Um, and my journey is potentially a little bit different to others because I was already known as a therapist when working for you guys. So as soon as the center closed, I did already have clients reaching out to me to work with me or like continue working with me or yeah. their loved ones reaching out to work with me. And I was on maternity leave at that time, actually, with my son. So I was like, oh, I better get my butt into gear and put together some programs. So they were just pretty much the initial, what do I know? People are asking for programs. Here's what I'm going to offer. Um, and I was doing that for probably a year and a half or so. Um, Can I just ask something? Like when you come up with an offering, because... Yeah. I know there's people at different ends of the scale. Some people like come up with an offering in one day and launch it the next day. And some people take on the other end of the scale, they're like, they want to perfect an offering like over a year before they launch it. Where are you at with that? Like how long does it take you? Like what's the, not, not in detail, but what kind of process do you go through to go, okay, this is what I'm going to offer. Mm, great question. Um, <laughs> There's, it already naturally happens with my clients and the journey that I'm going on with my clients. Um, so started off with the mental health and addiction work that naturally progressed. The clients I would do that work with would want to continue working with me to look at more sole purpose work. So naturally it progressed into, okay, I'm still going to offer the mental health for new clients coming in, but I'm now going to create an offering around um, sole purpose work because that's naturally what clients are already asking from me. Yeah. Um, and then from that point, the new transition again is those clients that have come through that journey of working on their mental health and personal development to then doing their sole purpose work. For a lot of those mm -hmm. clients, they would end up finding out that, um, their sole purpose is to also be a healer or a therapist mm -hmm. or run their own um, 
soul-led uh, business, which is yeah. now transitioned to, okay, what are clients asking for me now? What am I already naturally doing with my clients? Okay, I'm helping them step into or start their soul-led business. I'm feeling that pull to now ha have this as an offering. So it's, okay. it's really what I'm naturally already doing. So then, therefore, when I sit down to actually create the offering and put pen to paper, um, it probably takes me less than an hour. Amazing. And what I'm hearing is, and it's just different wording, it's you're really coming from a place of service rather mm -hmm. than just like, what do I want to do? What do I want to teach? You're kind of like, what do my people need? Um, and I really love that. And that's really like our souls are purpose-led and they do want to serve and I really love how that just naturally comes through um that's a really like balanced way of like what do I want to give and also what do my people need I, I love that so much um all right so that's so cool that you do it so quickly it just comes out and then you're like putting it together in Canva I guess and kind of uploading it to wherever um where, how do you market yourself? Like, how do you, for the people watching, because I know, um, how do you put yourself out there? For, yeah. Like, how do you do it? How do you put those programs out there and attract people? Sure. So, I mean, I would say that a lot of my marketing is through my clients already. So I would say that a really powerful way to market yourself is to give your clients results uh, because then they want to talk about those results and, and they want to refer you to their friends and family. Um, definitely written reviews go a long way as well because pe when people are landing on your website or your social media pages, they're able to have that confidence in knowing that you've already been able to help other people with the problem that they have or the journey that they're wanting to go on. Can I just um, stop you there just to the first point because I think there might be some new root cause therapy students like, oh, I have to have results to get clients but what would you say about root cause therapy in terms of sometimes we have difficult clients or not perfect sessions mm. what would you, what could you say to the um, new practitioners or practitioners that have had a challenging time with the mm -hmm. therapy perhaps and um, are worried about you just saying that maybe <laughs> yeah so perhaps worried about um being able to get those reviews I'm um, not the reviews. So, well, initially you said to get referrals, you've got to give really amazing results. Mm, mm. Yeah. So to have confidence as a therapist, which was actually my next point, the biggest oh, thing. Oh, okay, sure. You do the work. You're all over it, Mel. Which is do <laughs> yourself. You know, do the work that we're learning, um, so that you can obviously have that self confidence, so that you can have that. Um, you know, working on your own beliefs around um, your self-worth, around success, around money. Obviously, the um, students are all able to practice on each other, so really utilising each other to work on that, but then also knowing that it is the practice that makes perfect, you know. My first ever session that I held years and years ago wasn't perfect, and I'm sure yours wasn't either, Mel, but it's the more practice that we get, right? And the, your client, they only know what they know. So they don't know what you don't know yet. So it's really just starting out, allowing yourself, giving yourself permission to not be perfect from the start and knowing that you are going to grow the more sessions that you do and the more experience that you get, but also doing that inner work and really utilising um, either your own um, students around you in the group or hiring someone else um, experience that's able to support you with that. Yeah, I love that so much. And, yeah, it's so important for people to know you're not going to be amazing off the bat and it just takes time um, to – but the, with the framework, it definitely makes it easier mm. um, where you're not just feeling like you don't know how to run a session, I guess, like that's step by step. Um, so – Awesome. So I guess the next question is um, when people, so you've got your testimonials, you've got your referrals, um, you are posting your new offerings on social media and things like that. How do you go about signing someone up just for people that um, are wanting to sign more people? What's your process yeah. for yeah. signing up people into your programs? 
I will just go back to the marketing component. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I stopped you there. Yeah. <laughs> um, just when I am putting my offerings out, and I'm, I'm sure it's the same for you as well, when I am putting my offerings out, I really make sure that my um, marketing is really magnetic and that it's directed to my soulmate client. Um, and so that really comes down to getting clear on who your soulmate client is. Uh, trusting and knowing that there are more than enough clients out there for each of us and that there are different ones that are going to be more suited to different therapists or healers um, because I know with my journey at the start and quite a lot of my clients as well is their messaging is very broad because they're trying to really just meet everyone um, mm. except by being so broad they're not actually direct to their soulmate client so when you're really clear on who your soulmate client is, when you're really clear on um, your offering and you love that offering and you've done your own inner work around your fear of not attracting clients, around your fear of success, around not being worthy of abundance, that's when the messaging that you put out is going to be magnetic. Yeah, I love it. And I'm just going to add on that because I'm just so passionate about this as well. Um we got to get to that confidence level where you put an offering out and you just get crickets. You're yeah, willing yeah. to do it again and again because you do love it. You do believe in it. So, you know, you don't get a like on a post. It's that resilience of I'm still going to post it again tomorrow because I know people need it and I'm not just going to give up. And I think I see you do that, not saying that people don't connect with you, but I'd, I, I don't see you not posting offerings and I love that. And mm. um yeah, it does come back to our self-confidence and, you know, whether we still, like, believe in ourselves to keep keep going even when there's cricket sometimes. <laughs> Absolutely, because, I mean, you don't have to have a big following to be able to be successful. Most of my marketing, if it's not just naturally organic through referral, then it is through Instagram. And I only have about 800 and something followers, I think, because I really... Um, you know, I didn't turn a personal page into a business page or anything like that. I really just wanted uh, my followers to organically follow my page because they're in alignment with what it is that I'm doing. And um, your how many likes you get or how much engagement you get does not necessarily result in how many clients you're going to get because you know a lot of my clients that reached out through Instagram never liked any of my posts or anything like that prior because not everyone does like every post that they see or does feel confident um, showing interest on your post for example if you uh, anyone who's familiar with a call to action in a post which is at the end of a post you might say hey inbox me if you're interested in my offering or um, type type I'm interested in in the comments if you are you know most of the time people won't write that but they'll inbox you instead yeah. so it's just remembering that everyone obviously works differently and yeah continuing to put yourself out there by trusting trusting what it is that you're doing awesome love it so such good advice um, so, yeah, sorry, I kind of skipped past all that before, but okay. the next question was like, yeah, so when you do get people reaching out in the DMs or however they contact you, how do you go about, like, what's your process for actually signing them up to getting them mm. into the program? Yeah. So this is something that I did share in um, the last call in your group, and I've actually had a couple of people that have watched that inbox me and say how aligned it was for them and how they want to do this and so i'm really excited to share this uh with everyone else now as well which is that i'll just i'm um, sorry i'll just let everyone know that is in the root cause therapy training so to find chanel's interview um she went into like a lot of depth about how to do uh, make 5k months using rct it's in the um business mentoring product in your library and just reach out if you um don't have it but it's the last lesson in there in that mm. um in your course library so go ahead yeah no, that's okay and we do go into more detail in that around starting out i recall you asking questions about how i came up with my logo and my brand oh yeah we spoke a lot more in detail about that so that's really great for anyone starting out um so is this but this is more kind of the progression too so 
in relation to signing someone up when they reach out, I actually don't have a link for them to be able to um, book in an offering themselves because I actually want them to DM me and I want to be able to connect with them before we work together. And the reason that I want to be able to connect with them first is because I don't actually offer a free consultation. So when someone does reach out about my mentorship or one of my programs, um, or they just see my content and say, hey, I want to work with you. How can I go about that? Um, I will always get to know a little bit about what it is that they're after. I will then make a recommendation on what mentorship or program could be suited to them, but let them know that the first step is to have an initial discovery session with me, um, which is always an investment. So that investment um, has changed over time from $250 to $280 to $333 to now $444, which has been part of my journey. Um, as I've transitioned and become more confident in the prices that I'm offering. Um, but so because they are making that initial investment to be able to start working with me, that's why I like to um, connect with them first. Yep. Love it. And that, and it's really cool that we're getting this different perspective because obviously we did it differently and we had success with it. And I think the message is also there's, there's people can become successful in different ways, even if you're just mm -hmm. talking about selling ICT programs, you've got to do it the way that suits you. Um, and like having someone like a mentor can really help with that to help you discover what's your way. Because we will often look at how other people do it and think if we just do that, we'll have the same success. But mm -hmm. if it's not soul aligned, if it's not, which is something that you do with your um, business mentoring clients, if it's not soul aligned, then it's probably not going to work. If it's not aligned with, you know, um, your what works for you, then it's going to be, that's going to reflect back. Um, and so that can throw people off as well. It's like, well, then what do I do? But um, someone like, like, like I said, if they hire someone like you, they can get an idea. Um, like for me, I, I like to look at how all different people do it and then kind of sit with it and I've got that information and then go, okay, what do I like of that? What don't I like of that? And how do I want to sell or how do I want to share my offerings and how do I want to onboard my clients? Like what works for me? Um, and so, yeah, I just wanted to put that out there that there there is a way that's going to work for you. We just need to tap into our intuition and find out what that is and then just keep doing it over and over kind of yeah, like absolutely. Boring part of business is the persistence um yeah so thank you so much for sharing that and um yeah I just thought I'd just add that note for everyone definitely try that if that mm. if you feel like oh, I love it how Chanel does that um or that sounds like really good then definitely go with it but don't feel despondent if it doesn't work for you or, or things yeah. like that because yeah <laughs> yeah, don't, don't push it or force it because um, that's actually what I did with offering consultations. So when I first started, um, I wasn't offering the consultations. I was just starting with the initial session. Um, and then when I hired a business coach, uh, I started trying to do the consultations because that was what she, she suggested. And they just, it just wasn't working for me. People either weren't booking or if they were, it just wasn't mm -hmm. converting. And then as soon as I went back to just offering the single session as the consultation, but obviously ch um, charging for it, that's just what worked for me. And absolutely, it's not going to work for everyone. I know so many people that um, get success from doing the consult, but for me, um, not so much. And mm -hmm. just especially because it is quite a large investment. So, um, cause I want them to go straight from that initial session with me into a program. So not from that initial consult, just into like one session or just like a two pack or a four pack. I'm intending for them to go from that single session experience up to a program that goes for at least six sessions. Um, and by having that initial session with me where we incorporate the root cause therapy, they're able to have that experience and nine times out of 10 more, they're 
you know, root cause therapy is amazing. They're already <laughs> sold into that larger program and feel really confident in that investment. Yep. Yeah, I love that. I love that so much. And does that help you in terms of, I guess the next question is like how many hours and days do you work and have, knowing that they're scheduled for a program, how does that help with your scheduling and like your boundaries and your family life and that balance? Mm. Yeah, so it's changed a little bit over time. Um, I would say for the first year and a half to two years, I was seeing about six clients a week, which for the past six months or so has gone down to four a week. Um, and that's as my prices have increased, I've been able to maintain the same the same amount of income or a very similar amount of income by increasing my price and reducing the amount of clients that I was seeing. Um, and that has definitely come down to being able to trust my ability to continue to have the clients flowing. So the reason I was seeing six at the start and actually felt like I was working more than I wanted to was because I was coming from a place of fear. Fear if I didn't take that client on now, they might go elsewhere. Fear if um, I didn't take that client on now and get that money now, what if I can't get it later? Um, and along my journey and um, having more confidence in myself, um, moving my programs into more alignment with myself, working on my own um, energy, I've been able to realise that they're just naturally going to continue flowing. They have continued flowing this whole time. And so about six months ago, I reduced to four a week with a wait list, um, trusting that whoever's meant to work with me will work with me and whoever's meant to go elsewhere is going to get what they need there. Amazing. That's so good. And so how many hours do you work at the minute? So you've got the four clients. Is that Do you allocate some business time as well, like admin stuff? Yeah. Yeah, so I'd say I work about 10 to 15 hours a week at the moment. Um, and that's just based on my current goals, obviously having two young children and wanting to be able to have a good work-life balance and show up for them as well. So I only dedicate uh, four days a week to work, which is Monday to Thursday. Um, and typically I'll see one client a day in the afternoon and I'll do some business admin in the morning. So whether that's, you know, following up on inquiries, uh, offering um, SMS support or voice message support to my clients, and then of course, creating content and marketing. So yeah, 10 to 15 hours of work, uh, 10 to 15 hours of work a week um, feels really good to me right now. Amazing. That's so good. Um, and so in terms of like income, because um, you're pretty much the breadwinner in the family, I think, is that right? <laughs> yeah, you'd yeah. Say. Um, yeah. So how do you keep that income steady? Do you think, mm. would you say? Yeah. So it's definitely the programs. I mean, look, it is a number of things and I feel like I am probably repeating myself, but it, it's really the same answers for most of these questions, which yeah, is yeah. that um, obviously, so for me personally, charging for that initial session with a client um, yeah. and then from that experience, they're having the confidence to jump into a program and those programs go for minimum of six weeks. So I'm always able to know that I've got income coming in for at least the next six weeks coming. Um, but the way that I'm obviously attracting those clients in the first place really does come down to being in full alignment with who my soulmate clients are, being in full alignment with what my offerings are, uh, working on my own energy around bringing in clients, around success, around abundance, um, and really trusting where my journey is taking me. Yep. Because I was actually a little bit resistant when intu intuitively I knew that it was going to be time for me to step out of taking on uh, mental health clients and into more of the energetics business coaching. Um, 
yes, it only took me an hour to come up with the offering when I was ready for it, but I probably knew for several months prior and my clients were very consistent up until those few months prior. Yep. And all of a sudden my mental health clients and my personal development clients weren't flowing in the way that they were. And I already knew I was supposed to be letting that go and stepping into this. And for those few months, I really resisted it. And that was the results. Yeah. Gotcha. And then as soon as I accepted it, things started to shift positively again. Gotcha. And just, sorry, I've, we've just got a question come in. So, cause we're talking about um, income at the minute. So I hope that's okay. Um, Julie yeah. just asked, do you have a payment plan for your program for those who can't afford the full amount straight up? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So especially because it is quite a large investment to do the one-on-one -on -one work. So payment plans, in my opinion, are a must to make it achievable for everyone. Um, so yeah, I do offer payment plans through um, a program called Pay Advantage, which just does the weekly direct debit on the client's behalf. Um, so when a client does choose to um, proceed with a program, then I just take down a deposit and then they have their weekly or fortnightly instalment come out for them. Awesome. Love it. Um, and so... What would you say, and you've covered so much already, but what would you say is some of the main challenges that you found being in business? Mm. This work? I would definitely say my shadow parts that have come up through business and having to deal with those because I thought that I'd done a lot of work on myself prior to starting my own business two and a half years ago, and I had. But shadows definitely come to the surface when you start your own business and showing up in different areas of my life as well, not just in business. So, for example, uh, one particular belief that was really important for me to work on was the fear of being seen as my authentic self. So, and this is when I actually transitioned from the mental health and addiction programs to my other programs, um, Wounded to Awakened and Soulfully Aligned, which um, is still running. And how that actually showed up for me, how it was showing up in business was that I wasn't really putting myself out there. I wasn't actually authentically marketing myself because of fears. I wasn't jumping on stories and, and showing up and really um, showing my soulmate clients the value that I could offer them. But that would show up in other areas of my life, like me all of a sudden feeling really judged by friends and family, which I never felt that way before. And I was like, where, where are these things coming from? All of a sudden I've got an issue with that person or I'm feeling rejected by that person and literally yeah. came from nowhere. And me having to be able to have that self-awareness to understand, okay, this is coming up for a reason. Let me explore that. And then, of course, it would end up impacting my business in a positive way. But it's challenging, especially when you're it not is. seeking it. You're not consciously seeking the shadow work. It's just showing up in your life. And it's obviously a choice. I actually just did a post on this, but it's obviously a choice. Um if you want to try and push that to the side or, or you want to lean into it. Um, so, yeah, yeah I, I've leaned into a lot of shadows and it's absolutely been worth it, but also challenging. An amazing quote around this that I heard is, um, your business will heal you. Like your, mm. your business will heal you. Like it will bring up your stuff. It will push you to your edges. It, but we're choosing that challenge, like you said, like we're making – the choice rather than life just kind of blowing us around like we've chosen to live our purpose and that's always going to have challenges and even when it comes to healing there's no like um you heal all your beliefs and all of a sudden the rest of your life you're not going to have another challenge like it's not yeah. how it works it's always um even for me like I, if I look back two years ago and realise we're at the level that we are now in terms of just monetary success and stuff, yeah. I would be like, oh, my God, that would be like I, I'll be 
set like you know I'll be so happy but like I feel exactly the same but there's just new challenges I'm like do you know what I mean like of course I feel a little bit different because I do healing work so I do have those energetic shifts but yeah it's a it's a it's an amazing challenging journey definitely so thank you so much for sharing um that because it's it, it I think if we pretend that that's not a part of it or that we have to be perfect to be therapists or mm. to have a business that's just not realistic and it's not fair to I think some people portray that like on social media so mm. yeah it's just not not real life is it <laughs> and I'd say one of the other challenges is definitely um just the journey that it's taken to fully trust uh, my own intuition and that, um, you know, I guide my own path when it comes to business and doing it my way. Like I said, I have hired coaches in the past and it's that de it's definitely been helpful. Um, however, with some of those coaches, um, it was more about teaching me their strategy rather than helping yeah. me within and align to my own and find my own inner knowing and heal on my own stuff so then yeah I would obviously yeah. take some of their suggestions and apply it realize it didn't work and then yeah. have to come back to myself so um you're I like know. that's how I'm not going to do it <laughs> when you yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You're, all of the opportunities are learning experiences for sure. But of course. I would with some obstacles that um, lengthened out my path <laughs> a little. Definitely. I mean, every time um, we invest in a course, in a mastermind, in a coach, in a therapist, it's not always going to work out how we think it's going to work out. But the fact that we've invested in ourselves, we mm. always get something out of it, even if it was like, that's how I don't want to do it. Um, mm. And I think that really help, that's really helpful for people that have shame around past investments and that yeah. um, are not willing to invest going forward. I know every time I invest, even though like still a part of me is like, oh, you know, you shouldn't be spending money. And like I still got so many layers, but I know that every time I do, I'm investing in myself and I just start to energetically upgrade just with sending the money. It's already started because I've already like gone, I, I believe in myself enough that I can take what I need from this investment. Um, so, yeah, sorry. Absolutely. No, no, definitely. And just <laughs> even investing in yourself, you're going to have more accountability as well for yourself and when you do hire a whether it's a coach or a mentor or a therapist you know just like a you know as rct students should know you're not there to fix anyone you know you're just there to guide them in healing themselves it's the same for a coach and a mentor they're not there to give you the answers they're there to guide you in finding your own they're not there to um you know, up level you, they're there to guide you in up leveling yourself. And so what that means is when you invest in this way, you are going to have more accountability to, to do the work and to show up as well. Definitely, definitely. All righty. So we're going to kind of start wrapping it up, getting to that point. But what would you say are the top three tips that you would give RCT therapists starting out? Hmm. I would say what we covered, a couple of things we've already covered, which is um, just start. Don't feel like your offering has to be perfect or like you need to be the perfect therapist yet because it's the journey that you go on that gets you to that point. So just get started. Understand that you're going to become more experienced along the way and that your offerings probably are going to shift a little bit along the way based on the client work that you do, right? So you will probably start off by working with a range of different clients, but then you're going to get really clear on which clients it was that you got the most fulfillment out of. And then you can restructure your program to be able to be fully in alignment with attracting more of that. So just get started. Um, 
obviously work on some of your own blockages that are holding you back if you need to, um, you know, around not being good enough or not being able to offer enough value. Um, yeah, that, that would probably be my biggest one. Um, what else? Hmm. I think a lot of the questions that people have, like from my experience, is like, how much do I charge and what should I include and what do I, you know, and, and I know you touched on it in the last interview, but like what do I call myself? What do I call the program? Do you have any tips around that for people that feel a little bit stuck around? Yeah, yeah. In relation to charging, um, this is an interesting one because I do find that a lot of people probably, and I've even seen these questions in the group, like what's everyone else charging and what someone else is charging isn't necessarily what's in energetic alignment with you. So really just charging what feels good to you. Uh, for me, I actually uh, connect to my intuition and muscle test. I use muscle testing to uh, figure out the name of my program. So which what um, I'm, I'll come up with a few names that feel really good for me and then muscle test which one is in the highest good of myself and my soulmate clients. Um, and then the same for my pricing as well. And not being afraid to change your pricing as well if it feels wrong. Uh, and that's whether it's increasing or decreasing mm. your price. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, you know, I started off at 250 a session um, and then have slowly obviously gone up to now 444. And if I was try trying to charge 444 back then, I wouldn't be attracting any clients. And it wouldn't be because there's not clients there willing to pay me that much because there are. I'm seeing that right now but it would be because I didn't feel back then that I was worthy of that price. Um, so that would like do things like you probably wouldn't put it, you, uh, you wouldn't post as much about it. You wouldn't put your offer out there. It's like these little sabotages that we do because they're not actually really comfortable or someone reaches out and we're not really connecting with them. Um, mm. so that's the kind of sneaky ways that can show up. Or for some of us that have a website, we make the, the ability to see the price or book with us really small and hard to find. And these are the sneaky yeah. ways where you can know, okay, maybe I'm not charging an aligned price. Maybe mm. I'm just um, charging what I think, what I think I should be charging. And so, yeah, when I see people saying, what should I charge for an RCT session? I'm like, this is kind of the ballpark, but definitely just feel into what's right for you. And that kind of leads on to last time we caught up that you came over Um for a coffee, but we don't drink coffee, but, you know, you came over to hang out. <laughs> and uh, and we were talking about, like, there is no competition in mm. terms of don't worry if you want to charge 100 and someone else is charging 500, that mm -hmm. I, we've got no standards in regards to that because, like you said, your soulmate clients, they're meant to come to you, they're going to come to you. So you could have five different RCT practitioners sitting in a row and a person that's going to feel drawn to one particular person is going to go to them despite the price or other modalities or experience. Um, and so what's really helped us and even what we're doing right now is like, don't be afraid to like collab, like kind of, mm. um, you know, help each other a little bit and um, work together. I mean, that's how me and Ryan did it. We just like came together and, having two people can really like expand the energy quicker. You yeah. can like cross promote and things like that. You mm. can uh, support each other. But for me at the start, there was, I felt this like competition, like, no, these clients yeah. have to be me. And you do feel that at the start. And I think that's just an initial fear that we have. And mm -hmm. especially if we really want clients. We're kind of like, yeah, it's like this like yeah. minimalistic side comes out. So yeah, sorry, I just took over there a little bit, but I just thought it was a really important point around pricing um, yeah. and choosing, yeah. Absolutely. No, don't apologise. Everything you have to share is valuable. Um, Thank you. And <laughs> Thank you for your validation, yeah. Chanel. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's always been me. I'm a great validator. Yeah. Um, but that was even me at the start when the centre closed and you um, turned the RCT method into a certification. I was like, what? 
I'm not going to be one of the only RCT therapists out there. There's going to be the whole world. Yeah. I had a lot of those things come up for me as well that I, you know, lucky I did lean in and was able to move through that very quickly because a lot of my clients that I've done soulfully aligned with end up doing the RCT course. Yeah. Um, I'm so passionate, which is why I've stepped into this now about helping more therapists and healers and coaches succeed in their business. Because I mean, the one thing that's constant in life is change and we want to be growing and evolving and why are we in this space? It's because we want to help humanity to grow, heal and evolve. So how can I play my part in that now that there are, you know, so many other incredible therapists certified in the RCT method or some of the other methods that you guys offer? Um, I feel like my, my part now is to help others achieve what I've been able to so far. And I'm still not exactly where I want to be. You're still on your journey of growth and evolution. It's and always, life. it's a lifetime um, thing that I've committed to. I'm like, this is a lifetime thing. Like, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and who better to see like, you know, and, and I'm really about, um, if, the thing I love about root cause therapy is that it's a framework for your own personal wisdom and experience. So mm. but it's not doesn't rely on that. But what I love about um, when, when we start mentoring and teaching, you want to work with someone that's actually done it and you have done it and you've, you've embodied it and you've done it for a long time, let's say like nearly a decade, like it sounds like a really old one. <laughs> it's like getting to that point where like I would, that's why I was so excited to share Chanel and her new offering that I'd love for you to share in a moment. Mm. Um, to I couldn't think of anyone better to help you guys to get um, – a different perspective or to get some assistance someone that's done root cause therapy for a very long time done programs worked at the cent at the center for healing um that's why i was just like yes like definitely wanted to share and please go ahead and share um your latest pivot and i know you've been kind of touching on it through the mm. interview mm. but if you could just let us know like um about your business mentorship and what what that's all about for anyone that's interested that wants to reach out yeah, absolutely. So, oh, I'm so excited to share this because it's the first time that I'm actually giving voice to it. So, I mean, I've given voice on my Instagram page to the fact that I'm transitioning into the energetics business coaching and I've uh, only recently put my new business mentorship out there, but this is the first time that I get to speak about it, which is Yay. very exciting. <laughs> um, but yeah, so basically I've just recently launched a one-to-one -one business mentorship. It's a four-month mentorship. Um, and basically what I help my clients with is um, getting really clear on who their soulmate client is, getting really clear on uh, the offerings and therefore um, your messaging and your branding, um, as well as obviously working through all of your own shadows, working on um, a lot of the limiting beliefs that I have found uh, in myself and my other clients in business, uh, working on different energy upgrades around um, self-worth, success and abundance. And then, yeah, really just teaching everything that I know um, from an embodied place, from my experience running my own business. Um, so, Yay. yeah, it's very it's exciting. exciting. Yes, I've had it my first couple of signups already which is great oh, awesome because um, I only launched it I think last Friday so yes and I have a special offer for the RCT students too <gasps> yay um so the full price of the mentorship is three thousand six hundred and sixty six dollars uh but for RCT students um or any center for healing students really um the offer is uh three thousand dollars for the four month program. Uh, and that's just for anyone who signs up for the month of September. So it's about 20% off, I think. And I think it's about just under oh, about $200 a week for our time together. Awesome. So they can do that on a payment plan? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's about, I think it comes down to about $200 a week. Yep. Um, and that's for our four months together, which includes fortnightly one on one sessions. Um, along with um, unlimited box of support between sessions. That is such good value because even for me, yeah. like every day is different in, when you're like not, 
not only in business, but also like just to have some support and supervision around your RCT sessions and Chanel can help with both. I know you always give really good answers in the group. Sometimes like I don't even need to answer because you've like, <laughs> you, you know, RCT like the back of your hand. So like mm -hmm. you've answered. So you're going to get both with Chanel. So that's like so invaluable to have someone that you can message on Voxer at any time. Um, and obviously she'll get back to you when she can, but like, that's like really amazing value and I'm sure you'll get them even if you just sell one program you'll get the money back for the four months and like straight away anyway um yeah. so that's so good and how can they reach out to you and I will when this is finished I will link your Instagram handle mm. I think that's your main yeah way yeah, yeah. That's my main point of contact so yeah just drop that in the comments and basically um Whoever's interested can jump onto my Instagram page, have a bit of a look around um, the offering. Could, could you just tell tell us the handle just for people that are watching now before I yeah. drop in the comments? Yeah. Good question. I've recently changed it, so let me just double check. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Because they um, probably want to just come and check you out right now, I'm yeah. sure. So <laughs> it's, um, it's just my full name, so Chanel, C-H-A-N-E-L, Full stop de King, D E K I N G. Awesome. Sorry, yeah, what were you saying before I cut you off? Um, oh, yeah, so they can just um, jump on. The information about the mentorship is already in my uh, business mentorships highlight. Um, but yeah, just DM me to inquire about it. Obviously, the price will be what I just mentioned here, not what it is that I'm posting out to the rest of my audience. But yeah, have a suss of it. If it feels aligned for you, then just reach out and we can chat about um, doing an initial discovery session to get started. Yay, I'm so excited for you. And thank you so much for sharing all your amazing tips. I know even for people that aren't ready to invest, they would have just gotten so much out of your experience. So thank you so much. That's okay. I hope so. That's like I said, you know, um, I'm really just in this place where I just really want other um, coaches, therapists and healers to be able to succeed because the more that are succeeding, the more opportunity there is for humanity to grow and evolve. So, yeah, in, investing in my mentorship or not, if anyone got anything out of our call today, then that that's what I'm here for. Awesome. Thank you so much. And um, I'll make sure that those of you that had to drop out, I'll make sure the replay is available. Um, I'll post that in the guides and into the student community practice i can't even like say yeah <laughs> practice student community in your course portal i'll upload it there and you'll get an email as well um especially if you want to go back and watch it again for any of you that stayed all the way um thanks julie hi dale and mary rose oh mary rose said very helpful thank you <laughs> but i can't see the comments but yeah um... sorry i i don't know how to like do that but next time i'll um try and make that available so you can see but thank you again chanel and we'll see everyone soon yeah pleasure always good to see you mel bye everyone bye